What's up guys? I'm going to do a quick tutorial video on how I create my time lapses using Adobe Premiere Pro. So open up your clean timeline. Then first things first, we're going to go up here to Premiere Pro settings down to timeline. You're going to want to go over here to still image default duration. Make sure that's at one frame, not seconds, but frames. And then so say OK. Now, in the event you did have to change that, mine was already on one. If you had to change it, there's a good likelihood that it won't take. You're going to have to close that project out, then reopen it, and then Premiere Pro will recognize that change and make it take place. So you're going to want to grab your folder full of photos. There's 518 time-lapse photos. That's a setting on my camera. That takes a photo for every three seconds. I have a different image and it slowly creates all these images that make an animation that is your time lapse. So I'm going to do Command A to select them all, drag them into my timeline. It will automatically shape the timeline to the same size as the photo. It's slightly different than the 1080p or the, uh, the 4K timelines, so you will get a crop. If you'll see here, there's little boogers and little, little things on my camera. I dusted my lens off. A few months ago I'd cleaned them and these were gone. So then I dusted my, my lens off before I went out to shoot and there's still due to static electricity or or what have you dust in my bag, something. There's these little boogers all over the, the sky here. I'm gonna show you a trick of how to get rid of them. And then you'll see here I got my shadow in the way. I'm also going to uh oh well, when I move then there's just the shadow of the camera. I'm gonna show you a trick to get rid of that also. Um it's also worth noting these were JPEG photos. You can take photos in RAW and then take all of your RAW photos into Lightroom and you have a higher dynamic range. You have more digital information in those RAW images that you can manipulate and you can really tweak and dial in those colors. This was shot run and gun. I did not uh, change the photo over to RAW. So this was a JPEG image. The colors have not been manipulated yet. So I'm going to create an adjustment layer here say okay to that that makes it the same size as your timeline I'm going to stretch it out over the entire thing select the adjustment layer then go up here to your tab and select color and then right now I'm going to tweak the color just a little bit okay I've taken entirely too long color correcting that but I'm pretty happy with that overall image so now that it is the time lapse is in place. You want to play that and see what it looks like on the timeline. That looks pretty good. We got clouds moving here. We've got the shadow moving with the with the camera. I am pretty happy with that, so I'm going to stop that. Now, I select the timeline. If you select off the timeline, you'll see this blue line is now around the preview window. But if you click the timeline, the blue line is now around your timeline. That means it's selected, so you can do Command M. I'm going to spit this out to my desktop and call it time lapse no edit so this is going to give us the time lapse instead of being a bunch of pictures now it's going to be in the movie format and now you, then you can manipulate it and get rid of the shadow and the boogers that are on the clouds stand by while this spits out and then I'll speed it up and post okay once that is done exporting your 500 plus photos and it creates a video file you can put that back into your assets folder over here. Now you have this video file over here. Check out them clouds moving right along. Ooh, look at that. That is pretty. So it's, I want to get rid of this, this shadow for the camera right here and some of these boogers over here in the sky. Let me show you how we do that. So we drag this whole project into the timeline. You can select them both and say Command L. That separates the video from the audio. Get rid of that audio. Or I could have, instead of grabbing the entire image and dragging it here, I could have just grabbed this little video guy right here and it would have only been the video side of it. I'm going to go ahead and do that anyway. I want an extra clip of that video. Or if that didn't exist, I just deleted it. You can select it, then hold down Option, and if you drag it, it creates a second one. So there's no one right way. There's a couple ways you can drag and drop it. You can do the shortcut. And moving right along, I'm going to move this off set from the, uh, we'll call this the base video. So I'm going to move that offset from you. See how the, the, the shadow on the camera is right there in the middle and as the sun moves, it moves. 
we're gonna get rid of that right now. So you select the top clip, go over here to effect controls, to go over to the pin tool. And I'm gonna come over here to the side just a, just a little bit and I'm gonna mask out this little piece of grass. That is going to cover up our camera. So drag that down, then you're gonna to wanna, to, you want, want that to extend beyond the plane of the video there. And you're gonna come over here to your mask feather. You're gonna make that about 150 or so. Yeah, 140 would be good. You wanna soften that edge. If you do not increase that mask feather, this will have a hard edge and it will be noticeable. So then you're gonna to wanna to drag this top clip back over on top of there. So now it's sitting, it's resting right here. And you cannot see it. So there, this clip right here is only this little piece of grass that we saw right here, right? So now what you're gonna to wanna to do is you grab that and you're gonna to wanna to move that joker over here to the right just a bit. Bam. And then when you select off of it, if it looks too noticeable and that looks funky there, you can tweak your feather just a little bit. That'll either make it look more defined. Here, here, here's with the hard line. You can clearly see where that was placed there. Or you can increase the feather and it blurs that line out and it's way less noticeable with that blurry line there. Believe me when I say people aren't gonna look and study this grass and go, oh, I think that's been manipulated. They're gonna have their eye up here on the colors and on these pretty little clouds wisping by. So let's see what that looks like now. You don't even see the camera moving by right here. It does slightly change the shadow pattern, but it's not so incredibly noticeable when your audience is looking at these clouds. Now you're gonna use practically the same technique for the boogers in the sky. You're gonna grab this guy, hold option, and drag it up to create a new copy of it. And it's easier to drag it over so you can see what you're working with. If you apply the mask while it's on here, you can't see that it cut it off. It's, it's, it's harder to see it. So by, I like my sound effect there, by dragging it over here, you make it much more clear. So what you wanna do is when you see the booger here, you're gonna to wanna to move this guy over here just a little piece near it. You're gonna to wanna to increase the feather and then when you drag this, your timeline back over, it's right here. Now you're gonna wanna go to the position and just move it right over on top of that. Then you repeat the process for every one of these little boogers. So it will go from looking like this to having boogers and blemishes all over your sky to being much more clear and appealing to look at. So then, you go Command M, and that will do the entire project where you have media, right? So you just want to back it off, go forward a couple, mark N, mark your endpoint, letter I, mark your endpoint, and we will call that time lapse edit edit one e free. Let's export that to the desktop and see what it looks like. Then you have your 17 second edit. You can drag it back into your timeline. And then if you like the speed of the cloud, you can roll with it or you can always right click, say speed duration. I'm going to double that. And then I'm going to export, mark your end point. It'll time out at your out point. I'm going to export a faster version of my same time lapse. So I have a 17 second version and then I should have about an eight, eight or nine second version of it right here. That goes twice as fast. Let's see what that looks like. Bam, nine seconds. And this, those are zinging by much quicker. I feel like the, the faster cloud movement makes the edits less noticeable. The patches are less noticeable. And that, my friends, is how you create a time lapse in Premiere Pro and then put patches over blemishes that are on your lens.